Good evening, everybody. Good evening, and once again, welcome to yet another supremely amazing session on the part two of the Botany module class twelve for NEE twenty twenty one batch on the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants. And today we are discussing with the part two that is megasporogenesis. In the first class, that is the lecture number one, we have studied. the whole concept about the microsporogenesis how a microspore is formed everything we have studied am i right yes how a sporogenous tissue this uh, in, inside the epidermis you will have the sporogenous tissue that particular sporogenous tissue one of these cells of the sporogenous tissue becomes actively dividing and converts itself into pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell or potential pollen it undergo meiosis to form four haploid pollen grains which is actually known as the male gametophyte right which is actually known as the male gametophyte yes i'll show you which is actually known as the male gametophyte and this particular male gametophyte consist of a large cell which is a vegetative cell with an irregular nucleus that contains the food reserves and the generative cell which is a small cell that splits up into two male gametes at the time of pollen tube formation at that class also i have made a thing very clear about uh, the inner surface that is the egg sac which is made up of a hard layer called sporopollenin which is made up of a hard layer or an indestructible layer which is known as the sporopollenin okay no temperature no acid no base or enzyme can degrade it because it is resistant it is extremely resistant to all these condition the inner layer that is intain is made up of two components that is the normal cellulose and the pectin once again the pollen grain consists of two main cells that is a large vegetative cell with an irregular nucleus and the generative cell which is a small cell with containing two male gametes so in today's class we are discussing about the sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 2 on the topic megasporogenesis ready everyone don't forget to like share and subscribe our wonderful youtube channel of bio points stream the world of bio if your friends don't have telegram also please do share our videos our classes to your friends through any means by which you can share it to the maximum number do join our telegram group at bio point new to know more about our classes daily polls updates on our classes omr examination regular discussion daily quizzes and uh, daily question in 4 days we have completed 100 question today sharp at 3 o'clock we have completed the first 100 questions of the series that we have launched 3 days ago so in the next 4 days we will reach 200 in the upcoming 10th day we are going to hit our 1000 done everyone ready for it i hope you are you have taken a book separately as i have told you in telegram to take down the important questions that is coming along with the polls and i'm giving you 500 percentage guarantee that out of the total questions we are doing 80 percentage that is 80 questions of your need examination either for need 2021 or for need 2022 would definitely come from our classes our lectures and the questions that we do as exams and polls only those who were there with us for the need 2020 would know that most of the questions in biology came from what we have discussed in the class so do trust put your 100 percentage towards the preparation this is a crash course for need 2021 so do join our telegram group at biopoint new to know more about the crash course for need 2021 So let's begin with this particular topic of female flower. Female flower is known as what? Pistillate flower. In simple words, you can call it as the pistillate flower. 
So the female flower of the pistillate flower and its parts. So you know that the female flower consists of a long structure which is followed by a bulged portion. Okay, followed by a bulged portion. This particular area where the pollen grains falls on the female gamete, will known as gamete, uh, female reproductive tract, is known as stigma. And this is style, stigma, style, and the last one you will call it as to be the ovary. Stigma, style, and ovary. And inside this ovary, you would have the ovules. Okay, everyone. Inside this ovary, you will have the ovules, which is actually the female gamete. So in this particular session, we would be discussing with the pistil, megasporangium and the embryo sac. So let's begin with pistil. What is pistil? We already studied in the first class that gynoecium is the female reproductive part of the flower. Gynoecium is the female reproductive part of our flower. It consists of three main structures that is the stigma, style and the ovary. What is the function of ovary? After fertilization, the ovary gets converted into fruit. And what is ovules? Ovules get converted or ripened to form the seeds of the next generation. Okay. Stigma acts as a landing place for the pollen grains. Look, guys, this is the stigma. This is the stigma. And the pollen grains, either from this flower itself or the pollen grains from the other flower, would land on this particular I'll draw with the help of a diagram. I'm indicating the pollen grain with a red color right now, but it is actually yellow in color, the powdery substance. Okay, the pollen grains would land on the stigma and then it passes through the style and finally into the ovary. Is that clear? To everybody? Yes. We already studied that a female flower is known as pistillate flower. Okay, a female flower is known as a pistillate flower and if it contains only one pistil, if it contains only one pistil, you will call it as monocarpillary flower. If it consists of many pistils, it is called multicarpillary flower. Okay, if it consists of only one pistil, monocarpillary. If it consists of many pistils, it is called multicarpillary flowers. In multi-carpillary flowers, there may be many pistils, right? In multi-carpillary flower, many pistils would be there. So in that particular case, if the pistils may be fused, if the pistils are fused, then the condition is called syncarpus. If the pistils are free, it is called the apocarpus condition. Very important MCQ, at least 20, 25 times repeated MCQ from this chapter in connection with the morphology. Clear everybody. So gynoecium is a female reproductive part of a flower. One pistil monocarpillary, many pistil multicarpillary. In case of multicarpillary flowers, the pistil may be fused syncarpus. Guys, just remember fused. Fusion means syngamy. So fused means syncarpus. Free apocarpus condition. Each pistil consists of three main parts. That is a stigma, style and the ovary. What is stigma? It receives the pollen grain. Match the following question. MCQ. Elongated. Then the style is the elongated slender part below the stigma. MCQ question for aims. Ovary is the bulged basal part containing the placenta, which is located inside the ovarian locule or the cavity. The placenta contains the megasporangia or the ovules. And ovules can be called as what? The female gamete. Then some of you may be asking then, in case of pollen grain, you call it as a male gametophyte. So what, well, which is the female gametophyte? Female gametophyte, we have to study in detail. That is the embryo sac. Embryo sac is the female gametophyte. I hope you can see my writings 
female gametophytes is that clear next one so this is the diagram given in your ncrt itself so it's a very important diagram we have seen questions coming from this particular diagram mostly b diagram number b diagram number c we have been frequently confused we frequently get confused with it both these four diagrams are previous year question previous year question i am not taking uh, i am not telling it as a fake it's correct information correct bit of information these are all previous year mcqs so look at the first diagram we can explain one by one i'll explain or i'll read out the parts mentioned please study what is the diagram it also a that is the dissected part of a hibiscus flower showing pistil from which all other floral parts has been removed each and every sentence is important so this is the stigma the long filament that is a style then you have the ovary the ovary is attached to the thalamus the ovary is attached to the thalamus then what is b what is the diagram b and c very important just compare and study b is a multi carpellary syncarpus pistil of papaver and c is a multi carpellary but it is apocarpus gynecium of mycelia okay so this particular b is papaver Bo uh, both are multi carpellary but papaver is syncarpus that is fused together just study like this they are all fused right these are the free carpels that is apocarpus condition of mycelia done everyone both are multi carpellary one is syncarpus one is apocarpus papaver is syncarpus and apocarpus is mycelia and the last one is the typical diagram of an anatropous ovule typical diagram of an anatropous ovule what do you mean by anatropous ovule the chalaza and the, the micropyle chalaza is the opening over in one side and the micropyle is opening in the other side and explain in detail about each parts so anatropous means both of them lie like this right opposite to each other okay what are the main parts of the ovule the ovule has a particular structure that serves as an attachment to the placenta we already said that the ovule lies inside the placenta of the ovary so exactly in the placenta it should be attached with a placenta by a structure called a funicle very important funicle provides an attachment of the ovule to the ovary through the placenta funicle so this funicle so guys this is a funicle the funicle have to get attached right the funicle have to get attached i am not drawing the correct diagram okay one second yes it's not getting correct but i'm just the funicle this is the funicle the funicle are getting attached to the ovary at this particular site So that particular site of attachment of the funicle to the ovule is known as the hilum. Next, the ovule is covered by structures. Ovule, the out, the covering of ovule, you will call it as integuments. So many layers of integument, but the most probable outer integument and the inner integument. The portion. in which integument is not present that is the in, uh, portion of the ovule where integument is not covered or the portion of the ovule which is not covered by integument you will call it as a micropyle and the opening opposite to micropyle you will call it as the chalaza this is the female gametophyte i have already told the embryo sac and the embryo sac should receive certain amount of nutrients so that is provided by the new cells and new cells is similar to what tapetum in case of antrecium or tapetum in case of stamens that provides nutrition to the male gametophyte so here new cells provide a nutrition or it is a nutritive layer that provides nutrition to the female gametophyte okay so let's discuss in detail about each part 
मेगास्पोरांजियम रेडी एवरीवन मेगास्पोरांजियम द ओवियोल प्लस द प्लासेंटा इज अटैच द ओवियोल इज अटैच टू द प्लासेंटा विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ स्ट्रक्चर कॉल्ड फ्यूनिकल so ovule is the female gamete that is attached to the placenta present inside the ovary by a structure called a placenta through a structure called funicle the junction of the ovule the jun each sentence is a previous year mcq question second question the junction of the ovule and the funicle you will call that structure has to be hilum okay then the protective layers that is integument consist of the protective layers is known as integument and the area which is not covered by integument you will call it as the micropylar region look this is the micropylar region that is not covered by the integuments the chala salai opposite the region which is opposite to the micropyle you will call it as the chalasa and represents actually the basal part of the ovule then a nutritive layer that is new cells is present within the integument and contains the reserved food for the embryo sac next embryo sac or the female gametophyte is located within the new cells it's not nucleus it is new cells clear everyone embryo sac is the female gametophyte that is present inside the new cells it contains reserved food material it is a female gametophyte Pollen grain is the male gametophyte. Clear, everybody. About the cells, we would discuss. Okay, about the cells, we are about to discuss. So once again, I'll explain the opening, which is not covered by the integument. You will call it as the micropylar end, and the opening, which is opposite to the the structure, which is opposite or the region which is opposite to the opening, micropylar region is called the chalasal end. in an embryo sac in a typical embryo sac embryo sac is a female gametophyte so inside the embryo sac in a typical matured embryo sac it has an embryo sac a matured embryo sac is seven celled seven celled eight nucleated condition what is it a main embryo sac or a typical embryo sac is seven celled but it consists of eight nucleated condition ready to count everybody cell number 1 cell number 2 cell number 3 cell number 4 cell number 5 cell number 6 cell number 7 so a matured embryo sac is seven celled and let's now count out the number of nucleus nucleus number 1 nucleus number 2 nucleus number 3 nucleus 4 5 6 nucleus number 7 nucleus number 8 it is an eight nucleated seven celled condition at least 50 times a repeated mcq question please study very very important next next one we are going to discuss about some other important thing in the chalasal region you have three main cells the three cells are collectively known as the antipodal cell previous year mcq question the collective name of the cells present in the chalasal region is called antipodal cells and the collective name of these cells there are three cells present on the micropylar region also the two of them the middle one the large one that is the x cell which is surrounded by two synergids both the synergids and the egg cell together known as the egg apparatus okay and in the center you would have a secondary nucleus or a polar nucleus that is known as the central cell so let's discuss now in detail about the process of my megasporogenesis in the last class we studied in detail about the process of microsporogenesis the megaspore mother cell gets converted into megaspore by the process of megasporogenesis large and contains a dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus it undergoes which type of cell division meiosis to form four megaspore 
so guys inside the new cells one of these cells gets enlarged to form the megaspore mother cells or the actively dividing mother cell so that mother cell would undergo a type of cell division that is a meiosis to form four haploid cells given that four haploid cells look the nucleus megaspore mother cell this is a megaspore mother cell it undergo mitosis meiosis to form the megaspore dyad and finally converting it into a megaspore tetrad what was the case in case of the human uh, not human in case of the male player, parents in case of the male pollen grain formation what was it the four will develop into a microspore tetrad that would develop into four haploid pollen grain but there is a difference in case of megasporogenesis in case of megasporogenesis there is a difference three cells towards the micropylar end that is these three cells would get degenerated and one cell in the chalazer end only becomes functional this cell degenerate this cell degenerates and this also degenerates and this one only becomes functional clear clear everybody yes so guys this cells are formed it would convert like this okay so one i told you in the last diagram only one cell out of the four cell only one cell towards the chalazer end becomes functional so this cell undergo cell division to form two different cells okay that two would divide undergo mitosis to form four four would continue to have eight then it would rearrange four cells that is not four three cells three cells migrate actually i'll tell you guys if this is the embryo sac there will be four cells in the micropylar region and there will be four cells in the chalazer region also what happens is that one cell from the micropylar region and one cell from the chalazer region migrate towards the center to form the central cell okay and the three cells towards the micropylar region form the egg apparatus by forming the synergy it's on two sides by the egg in the middle then you have the two polar nuclei the migrated nucleus forms a polar nuclei in the center and you have the antipodal cells towards the chalazer region this is a very very important mcq for your neat examination in the chalazer end you will have the antipodal cells in the micropylar region you would have the filiform apparatus i'll tell you what is filiform apparatus synergies and the filiform apparatus actually guides they are hair like structure present in the synergies that guides the entry of pollen tube inside the particular embryo sac because egg egg is the female gamete embryo sac is the female gamete of fight so the filiform apparatus present in the synergies guides the entry of pollen tube into the egg clear everybody look this is a diagram you can take a screenshot of the next slide which will be really useful for you guys megaspore mother cell undergo meiosis 1 to form 2 meiosis 2 to form 4 3 megaspores degenerate and only one becomes functional that will undergo mitosis cell division look everything is there on your stand still everything is there in front of your eyes so please add a look at that this is the ovary before megasporogenesis an ovule the one of these cells from the new cell is enlarges to form the megaspore mother cell that undergo meiosis to form 1 2 3 4 4 haploid cells out of which three cells towards the micropylar region degenerate and only one cells become functional it would undergo mitosis to form four that four would undergo again mitosis to form eight different cells four of them migrate towards the chalazer region four of them migrate towards the micropylar region one nucleus from both the regions migrate towards the center to form a polar nuclei and they will getting fused together to form a central cell so the cells present in the chalazer region antipodals in the microbial synergies and the egg cell in the center you will have the polar nuclei clear everyone and finally it would lead to the embryo sac and then the placenta yes next we are going to study about the female gametophyte i have been repeating the same thing again and again once again i will repeat it for you okay so before that one second yes 
Next, female gametophyte. What do you mean by female gametophyte? The embryo sac. One of the nucellar cells in the microvilla region is differentiated to form an MMC. In case of microspore, we studied about PMC. Here it is the MMC or the megaspore mother cell. The cell is larger. It contains dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus. It undergo meiosis, forming four haploid cells called the megaspore tetrad. Three cells degenerate, and only one megaspore become functional. Functional megaspore is the first cell of the female gametophyte. And this nucleus, I have been explaining the same thing. The nucleus undergo mitosis to form two. Then divides to form four, and finally one cell from both the ends migrate towards the center. One cell from both the ends migrate towards the center to form haploid polar nuclei. And two successive mitotic division in each of these two nuclei form an eight nucleated embryo sac condition. Hope you have got it. Diagram is very very important. Yes, everybody. Yes. Got it. So, guys, that was what we have uh, prepared for today. But I hope we have took only a very few time, and the next one is also very simple. So, let's move on with the part three pollination. Also, over here in this class itself. Okay. So, moving on to part three as a continuation of this particular lecture itself. Part three pollination. We already studied that the. Main the sexual reproduction is divided into three main phases: pre-fertilization, fertilization, and the post-fertilization events. So post-fertilization is the gametogenesis, that is microsporogenesis and the megasporogenesis, along with the gamete transfer, that is the pollination. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our channel, our Telegram group at BioPoint New Crash Course to know more about. Join our Telegram group. Let's move on with this particular session also. Ready, everybody? So let's get started. Yes. So, kind of pollination. What do you mean by pollination? Pollination is a transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma. So, transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma is called pollination. But this pollination can be of one second, let me erase it. But this particular pollination can be different. Oh my God. Okay, this particular pollen grain is different. One second, let me correct over the pen or else I won't be able to write out. Okay, everyone, different. So depending upon the source of pollen, the pollination can be divided according to your NCRT. According to your NCRT, pollination can be divided into autogamy. Once again, let me take over the pen. Can be divided into autogamy, gaitinogamy, and xenogamy. Autogamy, gaitinogamy, and xenogamy. What do you mean by autogamy? Autogamy means the pollen grains are deposited from the same flower. That is transfer of pollen grain from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower. So those kind of flower produ uh, produces, autogamous flower produces two kinds of flowers. The first one is chasmogamous flower. Second one is cleistogamous flower. In case of chasmogamous flowers, it has an exposed anther and stigma. So in that particular case, what happens is that they can undergo both self-pollination and cross-pollination also. Okay, but in case of cleistogamous flowers means they are always closed. Okay, if I get a diagram of it, not a diagram, a picture of a cleistogamous flower, I'll definitely share with you in Telegram. Okay, so chasmogamous flower, chasmogamous flower means with exposed anther and stigma, cleistogamous flower means which do not open at all. It does not open at all and only autogamy occurs in it. Only autogamy, no any, uh, what? You cannot see any other type of pollination in it. It is both advantages and disadvantages also. The advantage of it is that 
what is the advantage of cleistogam as flower there is no need of pollinating agents okay even in the absence of pollinating agents seed setting is assured very important mcq okay guys so chasmogam as flower and cleistogam as flower very important mcq question is that clear geitnogamy 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 means it requires a pollinating agent what do you mean by geitnogamy it means that transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant okay another flower will be there but the plant would be the same so another flower of the same plant next is and pollinating agent is required next third one is a cenogamy that is different flower that is genetically different hibiscus pollen grain would fall into jasmine like this different pollen pollination way sometimes only we would have very chances of pollination is very less so genetically different type of pollen grains are to be brought to a flower sometimes it can be a high a red colored flower when it is a pollination is done between a red colored flower and the pink colored flower it would result in some other color the offspring may be some other color So let's move on with the wind pollination. Okay. So in case of wind pollination, the wind pollination you will call it as anemophily. Anemophily and anemophilous pollination. Okay. Pollinate pollination by wind anemophily. So here the pollen grains are light. they are non sticky they are dry because in the wind they have to get transferred in today when i went to the house warming i just took my mobile phone to just click up pick of the wind pollinating exactly this particular thing okay i have to i have selected certain plants but i haven't got the time uh, to take a snap of all these things I have selected a particular pea plant a flower of a pea plant i don't know how many of you have seen the pea plant uh, then uh, i have took so many examples so many things i have shown over the, uh, what i have noticed over there and i would try it um, i just wanted to make out all it when i being to there once again definitely i'll make a live for that okay i'll show you which and everything about the different types of philotaxy uh, then about the different this wind pollinating flowers is, was there and i would have shown you okay all the examples of wind pollinating flowers was there and i would show you okay next time when i will i'll be there i'll definitely make a live for you so pollen grains are light non sticky and dry because they have to be transferred through the wind this particular wind pollinated flowers have a well exposed anther since if their anther is well exposed only what happens is that the pollen grains would get exposed then they have large feathery stigma and the flowers are arranged as inflorescence because if a flower is small what happens wind cannot just pollinate but if it is strong if it is strong then definitely wind would have blown all the pollen grain otherwise the wind would have taken the flower also along with it and most probably single ovules will be there okay single ovule will be there next is the water pollination my throat is aching but i have to complete this so let's move on water pollination seen in submerged flowers okay water pollination you know what is water pollination water pollination is called a hydrophily okay water pollination is called a hydrophily and it is seen in submerged plants like valisneria hydrilla zostera etc in valisneria what happens is that the male flowers released on the water surface and the female flowers reaches the surface for pollination guys if this is the water level if this is the water level in case of valisin area during the time of release of the male gamete the male flower would appear above the water and would release the pollen grain so the pollen grain of the male flower the pollen grain of the valisin area will float in the water current so at that particular time the female flower would get matured and it will also come up okay female flower reaches a surface and finally results in the pollination okay results in the pollination then the second type is the sea grasses that is a zostera the pollen grains are long ribbon like 
okay ribbon like pollen grain and are carried passively to submerge the male flower will reaches the upward surface and releases the ribbon shaped pollen grain but the female flower remains submerged inside the water so this uh, what ribbon like pollen grain is brought to the submerged female flower then last you have the mucilage coated pollen grain so in case of water pollination the pollen grains would be covered by in aquatic plants a pollen grain would be covered i'm not talking about the leaves the pollen grain would be covered about a mucilaginous covering it's not cuticle it's a mucilaginous covering animal pollination animal pollinating flowers can be large and brightly colored and they can be showy then only guys this is an example i i told you right i'll show you a cleistogamous flower this flower will not open at all this is an example of a well known cleistogamous flower okay the uh, bud having the long beak it will pierce inside this and uh, drinks out the nectar okay in case of animal pollination large and brightly colored flowers are there and it is showy its flowers are generally small grouped into inflorescence to attract the birds the insects the animals everything it is highly fragrant by fragrance also bees and honey bees and everything would come it produces nectar so all that honey bee would come on to the flies would come on to the flower for the nectar and it would transfer pollen grains so the pollen grains are sticky and stigmatic surface provide reward to animal pollinators such as nectar pollen or a safe place for laying egg so in case of animal pollination what happens is that the pollinating agent should get some kind of a reward from the flower okay next we have the outbreeding device i'll show you how many how many are left out okay how many are left out i'll show you sorry battery is running low i'll just post it yes it's okay so once again we have four more slides to go okay everybody so from outbreeding device on what we will take in the next class okay my throat is a bit aching so i'll see you in the next class